Hi, everybody, and welcome to the RHAP BNB for episode several of Survivor 40, several minus one. My name is Mike Bloom, here to break down a double tribal council that really doubled our fun and then some, and what some are calling the best episode of the season, one that certainly had the laughs, had the strategy, and had some of our cast out in full force. And so is our panel right now. Uh, I guess I'll start... A for Albacore Tuna. Liana Boris, your turn. <laughs> B for Bass. No, no. <laughs> you have to say A first as we're going down our fish names. <laughs> okay. Breen. Nope. Liana, you're out. <laughs> Beth Dixon, special I guest, your turn. Thanks, Ike. Um, I am going to go with uh, Baltimore. <laughs> I mean, I guess that counts. I suppose. <laughs> Not Ike. Oh my God. That's the other Thanks thing. Thanks for too. the shout like, out, Ike. Did yeah. you did you see there was a TikTok the TikTok that they put out? But I mean it was in the actual episode where uh Jeff calls Tim Jim. What? Did you see that? No. Yes. Oh what? my God. Oh okay, wait, 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 wait. We'll find it. We can play. Lots of fun. I didn't notice this. We can oh, see God. <laughs> We can have this debate actually about whether or not he says Jim or Tim. Because oh, is it Laurel and Yanni? Yes. I think, yes. I, but I, ooh, I'm team Jim, baby. Like the, oh, it's a the, thousand percent Jim. Okay. So the subtitles try to convince us that it's okay. Wait, hold on. This is already off the rails. Okay. You continue. <laughs> we were, we were we'll never on this. the rails. <laughs> Best calling me Ike. <laughs> See, this this is what makes it so much funnier because Mike didn't know the reference at all. He's like, what the hell? Let me find it. Like, is this an uh, Ike Turner reference? If so, disavow. <laughs> Please don't compare me to him. Uh, oh, my God. Which channel? Hold on. Which channel was it in? Uh, oh, the, 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 the. I, I, I'll find it. But anyway, I the point it's in the is. Drafting. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I'm trying to figure out I which think it's in the one. Live chat. It's in live. Okay, wait, wait, hold on. Where is live chat? Uh, so yeah. So look, there was a so at the immunity challenge. Okay, yes. this is in the context of when Jeff is learning how black people, black people say <laughs> what, what time it is. Which, right? by when, the way, is a ridiculous sentence. That part of the immunity challenge where Emmy winner Jeff Probst learns how black people ask what time it is. <laughs> Like people say, this show has gotten too soft. Show. It's gotten too the more you know sob stories. Jeff is learning so many societal lessons. <laughs> yes. Okay. So this is. I sent the link in the private chat. So Mike, this the, yeah, I'll, the I'll question, the the line in question occurs within probably the first like three or four seconds. It's very quick. It's right at the very beginning of this uh, this clip. Okay, I have to see if and I'm essentially, a it's when Tim goes, what's up, Jeff? And then Jeff replies, okay? Right, and then the debate is, is what name Jeff is saying when he's replying to Tim. And I right. want everybody who happens to watch this on YouTube to, you know, make sure that you don't read the subtitles. Let's right. just listen. Everyone close okay. your eyes. Let's make close this an audio eyes. experience. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, here we go. Okay. Okay. Like. Okay. So we didn't hear it. Oh, or see it. I keep <laughs> or see it. I keep forgetting to share it. I thought everyone imagined it was playing it along yeah, in their we head all at the same close time. Our eyes. This is a communal like. All right, we're all gonna press play. Like we're all sitting at the same uh, row in the airplane. We're all gonna play the movie at the same time. All right. Yes. Take two. Here we go. What's up, Jeff? What's up, Jim? All right. You heard it now this time, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. So it's like a soft T to me. It's like a lowercase T. I heard Tim. It was I hear Jim. Jim. <laughs> shim. 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 Well, okay. So I, I, will, I will compromise on shim. <laughs> okay, shim is somehow worse. <laughs> it is. All right, look, maybe, look at maybe Tim's like, face there shim. right afterwards, too. Right, here we go, here He's we go. even thinking. He just called me Jim. Let okay. me say it again. Okay. What's up, Jeff? What's up, Jim? Thanks for the shout out. Do you see that? Like, you name? motherfucker got my Did name you just wrong. Call me Jim. That's we're the at the merge. He's calling me Jim. That's that face. Yeah, just called me Jim. Anyway, 
I stand by it's Jim. I'm team Jim, hashtag team Jim. Uh, but, you know, I understand it's Shim, t- hashtag team Shim. <laughs> I'm hashtag team Shim. Yeah. Yay. I mean, yes. I think Charlie was the one that was channeling more Jim in this episode, but more so Jim yes. Halpert and the way he was trolling Q. It was amazing. Yes. Oh, my God. It was so good. And his little smile to the camera afterwards where he's like, <laughs> So, <laughs> that's so funny. That's that's my thing about this episode, which I'm so excited to talk about in all of its glory. Of course, listen, if we have to do this, we just merged, but now we're not merging anymore. We're dividing into two tribes yet again and each voting a person off. This is by far the best version we've gotten out of this. I talked about this last week, that it does feel like as much as we malign this twist, especially when one person doesn't make the jury, there is almost always like an interesting move that's done in at least yeah. one of these groups. Here, we got them in both, really, where, yes, R.I.P. Shim was kind of like had his die cast in the very beginning of the segment when Q's like, which side are you on? I'm telling you which side you're on, the side facing Ponderosa, because I'm kicking you in the ass right now, buddy. (laughs) But there was still a lot of intrigue and back and forth that I was certainly surprised by the outcome. And of course, we'll talk about the NAMI implosion that happened on the other side. But the other thing is, again, something we talked about last week is that I do feel like this cast really was low-key funny through the first six weeks of this. And I understand there's a lot of tinged emotions around both perceiving the characters and the season and their actions that maybe distracted people from that. I think this week really cements it, though, where everyone was doing, whether intentionally or not, just goofy-ass things that had me laughing the entire time. This is one of the funniest episodes of Survivor I can remember in quite a while from everything from the immunity challenge to like you said even charlie's like looks to the camera when he was smiling devilishly to him pretending to nap and look through his arms to uh venus sitting there and just alone saying like no one wants to have conversations with me to kenzie and tiffany complaining about q by doing impressions of q to each other like bet there was so much gold packed into this episode This episode was great, and it was great from a storytelling perspective, from an editing perspective, from twists and turns with voting and strategy, uh, relationships, and it's also just interesting for me. When I look at the the two tribals that we have, it highlights what this merge is really coming from, like these three different tribes, and how every single tribe is playing very, very differently as individuals within the merge. You have... (laughs) Yami, who's like, all right, I don't care about these people anymore. We're going to stab each other in the back. I want to make the best move for my game because I'm on television and I want people to see me on television. I think this is ultimately like at the end of the day, Tevin's trying to create a a resume for himself. Venus is trying to create a resume for herself. Soda is trying to create a resume for herself, but they're doing it in flashy ways that may or may not actually help them at the end of the day. Sega is very much like, no, these are my brothers and sisters, and we will be together until the end of time. And then Yahoo's like, okay, we have been the underdogs, and now we have the power, but also Q is annoying. So like, what are we going to do about that at some point, right? And it's just really, really fascinating to see all three of these tribes come together and the way that everything uh, boils down to in these two individual like voting tribes um, and, and create some really interesting strategy. One thing that I overlooked when we were talking about this twist last week, and I realized it going through this episode, was when splitting into groups of six and having both group of six go to tribal, you have to get everybody's perspective, essentially. Yeah. And that was really beneficial because we got to see some people that we got very little content or background content for. Finally, like Liz got a real confessional. Like, finally, we get to see Uh, what Liz is doing. And we get to see all her bagadocio, if you will, and her being like, I don't even pack tonight. Oh, I didn't even bring my bag. Like, okay, girl, this is cringy. I love it. Let's do it. So that was really wonderful. And then you just got to see like more of the details. The fact that we go to the immunity challenge in so quick in the episode Mm -hmm. was to me a fantastic sign. Because I I was like, ah, there's going to be something fun after this. There's a reason why we're yada yada yang through everything before that. We're going to get a good episode. And I think that that was exemplified in this. Plus a Jelinski callback, both with the episode title and with how long they've been up there in the immunity with several minutes, right? All of that just makes for such a fun episode. I, I just saw at the time of recording this, Jess tweet something asking if Jelinski is doing an Elizabeth Holmes thing or if they think we really talks like this. <laughs> 
my god now she's putting it on and now i'm kind of obsessed with jelinski being the elizabeth holmes of survivor <laughs> could you imagine <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, like, like could you imagine like elizabeth holmes would have like a motivational quote painted on the theranos building of like you know legends make their own path or something like that <laughs> well many things that Jalisk said several actually mean seven just in beautiful script writing yeah we're gonna get like a cover story with him like holding an idol you know like this or whatever right like that classic <laughs> elizabeth holmes picture yeah like um... i would imagine him <laughs> sitting in front of a pitch meeting and being like uh, Jeff, actually, uh, it does take only one drop of blood to analyze all these things. I'm pretty sure that's what that means. <laughs> My gosh. I, you know what? Now I'm also moving to, like, almost like a RuPaul, like, House of Hidden Meanings kind of thing. I can't wait for him to be, like, House of Several Meetings. And, like, it's just, like... <laughs> You know, it, it's just him really exploring all of these wonderful things that he's just gotten a little off. I wonder but who he's going to dress like. Like, is he going to, you know, because obviously Elizabeth Holmes, famously Steve Jobs was her mm -hmm. idol. So is Jeff Probst, like, his idol? And he's going to just, like, dress? Like, no, Bonnie like already Jeff took Probst? care of that. Yeah. That's true. Yes. You, you're my idol. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Curious. Well, we'll have to watch this because I will say, like, the fact that the first boot could have such staying power and not even just from the audience's memes. Like, the castaways also, seven episodes in, are still talking about this man. So that's the thing is that Jelinski did tell me in my interview with him all the way back. He's like, they tried to name the Merge Tribe after me. And we see what the Ner Merge Tribe name is, like Nui Nui or something like that. And like, part of me wants to ask. Part of me also knows knowing this cast, like the last thing I want to do is have them be like, hell no, we didn't name it after Jelinski. And then it's just like another firefight gets started online. <laughs> oh my gosh. It just would have been great if the tribe name was several. That's it. Just like, all right, we're bringing on in the Merge Tribe several, which of course means seven, but there aren't seven of you yet. I don't know. Yeah. Oh my gosh. What oh, a disaster. Goodness. Yeah, that's 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 the thing is, as I mentioned, with the small groups, like it just allowed all of the chaos to shine. And I think the other thing too of, okay, strategically, like I know we were in fun, goofy games, but like strategically, what is even happening? The fact that I get that Tevin wants to make a big move, but Soda is your closest, like one of your perceived closest allies who like wants to work with you, dude. Like there's still so many people left. I didn't understand that at all. So yeah. that was very interesting. And then we got to see like Venus and then we got to see Soda give Venus credit, which then Tevin gets the no reaction. Yeah. So so curious to see how that's gonna go well that's the thing is that there's been so much speculation to the point where it feels like we kind of run ourselves in circles as to okay did tevin know about it and he threw a vote on to venus mm -hmm. to protect himself and for sean the dark or was he left out because the way they sort of edited it right was him going no as she walked out even though again it was this whole build-up up to that point of him being like all right Soda gotta go to finally the vending machine's all out of cash uh and so we're going diet right now <laughs> I, I wonder though if it comes down to again this idea of splitting into two groups of six where you're thinking if i don't get soda out now can i build momentum against her like right. yes tevin does have the advantage or so he thinks of this plus one alliance which little does he know gets completely upended on the other side which i do kind of wish another advantage of like doing this at the final 10 if you have to is like i do like the reaction of the other group coming in and like seeing mm -hmm. someone sitting on the jury and being like, oh, shit, okay, how is this going to affect things? Like, I would wonder if they look over and they see Tim sitting on uh, is sitting there, are they, like, changing their minds? Probably not with this group because they yeah. waffle, but also they're incredibly blunt with their directions. Um, but I do think that for Tevin, I would imagine maybe it was a case of, like, this has been fermenting for a long time. Really, the theme of Nami this week was, like, lying in wait to finally make this yeah. move happen last week they tried to still stay unified it still felt like a tribal game it was just get through mergatory make the merge and then we can start playing and it truly felt like on really a three four pronged front that happened with those four namis and so i do wonder for tevin and venus and maybe even soda to a certain perspective was it a matter of okay we can always take them out down the line but do we want to keep giving them runway or are we gonna kind of ground the plane right now we have four votes now let's just use this now instead of having to have them survive and then hope for what six out of ten moving forward 
It's just really fascinating, too, because last week they were so focused on Nami versus Sika. And then this week they were like, eh, forget that. And Sika, like, meanwhile, Tim and, uh, and Ben are over on the other tribe being like, no, we should be Sika strong. And, like, Tim's, like, literally goes home because he's so committed to Sika. And mm -hmm. Yami could not care less. You know, it was just, like, it was amazing to see, like, that just completely change when they had the easiest vote out that could possibly be handed. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think that that goes to the point Beth, that you made earlier about how each how each tribe is so different. Yeah. And that's really interesting, given the fact that the season like the castaways together all feel like a unit. But then when you look at the individual tribes, like how different each tribe is playing and the fact that Ben like Ben and Tim, I mean, Tim would just not give an inch like at all. And you're just like, bro, if you're saying you're committed to the six person thing, you want to vote out Hunter. Like that's not, the math ain't mathing. Like it's just not coming together. So no wonder Q was like suspicious of the whole situation. I mean, he was, but then he wasn't at the same time. Considering that then he has that conversation with Ben. That's my favorite thing Bam. is the way that Q says Ben uh, with his, with his control. But here's the other thing. Uh, and I tweeted about this, but I really do wonder if it's something that will ever come up. But if it's something that's kind of unconsciously affecting things on the island, is that Q and Hunter have this incredibly tight connection. Mm -hmm. They are both from Mississippi. They are both the first contestants from Mississippi in at least 15 years on the show. They were eyeing each other from when I talked with them two days beforehand. So I think... On paper, you would say, like, the one name I won't float out to Q in this moment is Hunter. Granted, mm -hmm. you are limited options because you can't really float out a Yanu either, especially with Kenzie Immune. But I do wonder, like, are people clocking that? Maybe not a Sega because they don't know other tribes. But, like, is anyone on Nami saying, oh, yeah, I heard a Q's from Mississippi. Do you think him and Hunter have a thing going on? Do you think the Yanus are like, Q's been spending a lot of time with Hunter, though, again, they have much larger access to grind with Q, it seems. Yeah. Mm hmm I think that that's why I like this twist a lot. I'm kind of a, I'm, I'm more of a new modern era of survivor apologist and defender. And one of the things that I like about this is that it makes this particular twist that we've now seen a couple of times where two tribes go at the merge, the first tribe, the first person does not make it to the jury. I, I know exactly what you're saying, Mike, of like, I would, I also would love the gag of if you're second, you get to know at the least who got voted out the first one. Cause I do think that that makes a really interesting scrambling for the second, um, I mean, uh, tribal council. So if, even if Jeff were to be like, so-and-so voted out at the, you know, last tribal and just told them straight up and then just got to take a back seat to see like, so you came in here with a specific idea, but I've now told you who was voted out. Mm -hmm. How does that change things now? And I think that that would have been interesting. But I even think like that would have been a moment where I wonder if like Yami would have looked at each other like, uh, maybe we do go Charlie here. And does that mm -hmm. change the vote then um, off of Soda mm -hmm. or Venus? Right. I, I think especially with the like in this particular season with this six person alliance floating that mm -hmm. doesn't really feel concrete by any means, but people are still seemingly making decisions. Well, it's based concrete on because medical. it's sunk at this point. It's yeah. gone. <laughs> yeah, truly, literally concrete. Yeah, at the bottom of the ocean. Uh, so that that I think also adds an element to it of, of there are decisions based on this. And so when one of the members of that supposed concrete alliance goes out, like, are we really willing to put all of our eggs in that sinking basket? Yeah, right. because, I mean, we go to that NAMI-led group, right? And the first thing Tevin says is, oh, people want to go for Charlie, but Maria and I know that there's a game that's larger than the buffs that we first right. drew on day mm -hmm. one. And so I do wonder if that didn't happen, if we knew it was falling apart, is Tevin like, okay, do I need to work with Maria more? Though, again, at that point, I think it was also this idea of shaking up that quite literal soda bottle for seven episodes and then finally letting it loose of like, at this point, Tevin had such an idea in his head about both Venus and Soda. Soda told me that a couple of days before she went out, Tevin explicitly like had a conversation with her where she could feel him getting distant as he talked mm -hmm. about. And he told her like, I, I, I don't trust you in Venus anymore, basically. And so, I, I, A, I think you can't put the cat back on that tube of toothpaste. Right. Though, again, these, this cast is so open and vocal with each other that maybe you can't, considering that Venus sat down with Charlie and is like, 
Yeah, I was pissed that you voted me off to the point that I blame Soda, but like, let's work together now. But I do think that Tevin just had this idea in his head by the time it got to this first vote. And again, it's not necessarily a proponent of like, again, the intentional Matt saying Lulu, Yanu, whatever you want to call it. But the idea of vote early, vote often so that you can lock in with a group that you can at least say, yeah, I have at least some modicum of trust in you mm -hmm. because we all wrote a name on a piece of paper together or vice versa. Mm -hmm. For sure. And I also think too that it's, I, 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 do, I really think it's important to underline the fact that we have a unique show that we watch where like 99% of the people who are coming on now are super fans, right? Mm. So they also not only want to make big moves for their own game so that they have a resume at the end, they want to make big moves so that they're because they're on television. Like there was no other reason, honestly, for Tevin in this particular instance to be like, let me try to orchestrate something. So like, because this is a moment where you're sitting back and going, I need something big. And these are two people who I don't trust who are on my own tribe. Um, I'm trying to pick potentially get in with Maria with a six person alliance, like you said, not knowing that there's imploding on the other side of, uh, of things over there. Um, and you're just kind of sitting back and going, okay, so Maria's safe. Okay. Charlie would be the, the obvious vote out. Venus is smart enough to know that she's probably the one that's going to go, not Charlie. Cause we're going to tell her that. And instead of doing anything to kind of imply to soda that, there could be other moves other than just Venus at this point. He kind of sinks his own ship with her. And it, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what everybody else on the tribe knows. It only matters what the jury knows and what they're going to believe from people when they come back. So Soda getting this high five moment and, and just got to say on the side, like what a classy exit and, and just like, to be able to look at somebody who you've had kind of an antagonistic relationship with and be able to give them a hug and give them a kudos on the way out with it, knowing that your game is at the end, like that is just kudos to soda for that. But that also means like how much more emotional, like walls that she going to have when she goes to the jury and people try to change the story after she just mm -hmm. had this whole wonderful moment. I think that she's going to probably be a juror that sticks to her guns and Tevin's not going to get, any kind of credit for the work that he was doing to try to orchestrate this. And that's the game. Mm, I mean, and with v Venus really did say it was me. And so does said mama kudos for saying that for spilling for, for spilling, spilling. <laughs> mama. kudos. <laughs> yes. Oh gosh. Yeah. Oh, aircraft. <laughs> oh, air. Oh, airport. Air yeah. airport. The, I mean, that's a thing in soda also, you know, first member of the jury that also means something right we've seen foreman of the jury really have a lot of impact so it's also entirely possible that like jurors come and so does like this is what happened right and starts continuing to perpetuate that narrative and until either tevin i guess shows up really on the jury and then in that case well you're not gonna win anyway so you know that really puts him i think in a little bit of a pickle and i think that's that's um yeah, something interesting to consider moving forward. That, and again, like, we just missed so much of NAMI, I feel like, early on, based yeah. on the fact that they were winning so much, which, again, kudos to them. Kudos for spilling, whatever. So, for winning. Yeah. For winning. <laughs> NAMI, kudos no. for you for winning. <laughs> I mean, look, so we just missed out on a lot of that personality. And mm -hmm. I'm actually really sad about that because I was so into Soda in the preseason. I was like, yeah. I really like this personality. She clicked with me. So I'm sad that we missed out on that. But you know what? Hopefully she'll give us some great jury reactions. Not oh, me. She, not me. She, oh, she absolutely. Like, she will let you know what she's thinking about you in that moment. Neutrality, yeah. thy name, is not Soda. But even something like the hate boner that Liz had for Soda, where, like, Tevin comes to her, she's like, I'm all ears. Oh, Go ahead. Terrible. How do we kill her? Like, Liz! <laughs> even when I asked Soda about it, she's like, yeah, I don't know where that came from. It, it was interesting, because Liz was just kind of laying on the beach, and all of a sudden she's like, what? <laughs> We're going to take out soda of all people. Like it was just like, I was like, oh, she has been preparing for this moment to like rise out of the coffin as a vampire to be like, let's do this. You know, it was interesting. Mm -hmm. I, I love Liz so much because in an enigma of a season featuring an enigma of a cast, she is the enigma to end all enigmas of like, oh, for sure. Here's this woman who hit the beach within the first three minutes and declared her net worth, who <laughs> refuses to search for idols and just kind of lays around camp. 
who didn't bring her back to tribal council and openly gloats about it as well. This moment it absolutely- is also playing survivor allergic to everything that's on the island. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, she, she needs to make the finale in it's my incredible opinion. if she makes the finale she could be like there's no reason that y'all le- should have let me be here first of all i had no business surviving on this island i had no business i told you from the get-go i was a millionaire who didn't need this money and y'all just like kicked the can with me down here to the end you all should feel stupid and give me the million dollars like if that was i would do it i'd be like you know what screw strategy you're a thousand percent right that's the goat game that's to, to, that's the goaded goat game right there. That's what I'm wondering. Like, is it more goat and not so much goat? You know what I mean? Yeah. That, mm-hmm. Like, that's my concern. Is for it her. more is Tim it... or Jim or Shim? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I'm not talking Shim. So it's really just the the fact that if you're sitting at the end, everybody's gonna be like, nah. <laughs> I don't know. I just ugh, I just have such a hard time seeing her winning the money. Well, here's yeah. the thing. Let me also start making predictions for the finale that's like in a month's time. I think we're going to see Ben get carted off to a new beach. I think all the moments where Ben is being targeted of like, well, he's too social. We've got to get rid of him. We've now seen twice. People are like, nah, there's bigger fish to fry. Mm-hmm. And now I think he's going to be personified as someone who doesn't really have anyone, right? Tim was the one that was really perceived as like his main number one. And he really isn't looked at as like, I don't know. I know people are saying like, oh my God, this guy's incredibly dangerous. But like, I don't know. I love Ben because he is Ben. Like this is not a baby holding a dagger. It's just a baby. And I can imagine from that perspective, especially as these people are so hungry to take a bite out of anyone that might seem threatening, that he's just going to keep slipping and rocking his way to the final five. Mm -hmm. I also think, too, we see, you know, I felt like while the emphasis was more on Kenzie, we do see some pretty human moments from Ben this this episode, Um, not only having a panic panic attack where Kenzie, you know, calmed him down by saying, like, you know, thank you for sharing, for spilling that you're having a panic attack, you know, having a (laughs) moment. Everyone's going to be like, what does that mean? If you don't watch Drag Race, sorry. Go watch Uh, RuPaul's Drag Race season 16. It's pretty damn fantastic. You'll you'll be you'll be telling us thank you for kudos thank you kudos for saying that for saying that for, for spilling. spilling um but I also feel like you know we have this moment where I know I identified with it where he was like you know I feel like a lot of people see me as kind of the dancing monkey entertainer of, of their lives and that I bring warmth mm-hmm. to people but who's keeping me warm um and I mm-hmm. and and I literally in that moment I was like I see you I see you Ben and like this whole time I've been like okay Ben like whatever like he's kind of a whatever character but you start to really feel that kind of human connection and emotion to people on the screen. And I don't think you put that in the episode unless it means something moving forward. Um, And I also think like, just one thing about soda is like this entire, her edit has been so weird to me. Mm -hmm. The first episode was very soda focused on that tribe. You know, Nami had a lot to say um, and she was the spokesperson, you know? And then the second episode, it's like, she goes from being like, you know, the head cheerleader to being, you know, on the bleachers, just, just being on the bleachers, exactly. Um, or Charlie's being. Charlie's like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then she. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh gosh, I got this cue. Um, Baltimore. <laughs> She also, like, I felt like her edit just turned into being a supporting character for Venus or Tevin at the end of the day, Mm -hmm. where it's, like, all about how Soda is making Tevin or Venus feel and not necessarily getting Soda's perspective on the things that she's saying and doing. Mm -hmm. And that is really interesting when I read any kind of edit, especially in the beginning, because I'm saying that is somebody who's important to the story, but the story's not about Mm -hmm. them. And so I kind of figured she would make it to jury but probably wouldn't go too far but what does that say about venus and tevin then um right because that's the other thing as well is especially getting to speak with her and look everyone has their side to a story but i think getting some insight as to why she handled the relationship with venus the way she did which was like we were talking about with the sinking basket of eggs liana i think to use the metaphor you used before that she got that sense from like day two was like okay this isn't working venus is coming to her being like help me 
please, I'm drowning. And she's like, I, I am trying, but you are dragging me down with me. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I wonder if it is this matter of <laughs> Venus being shown in a certain way, being shown as this like big underdog. And so therefore, like anyone who's in opposition to her must go for Venus to survive. Right. Mm. Okay. So I'm, I'm happy you brought up the edit because after, so Puya and I have started doing after each episode, we write down who we think the winner is. It's almost like our Ooh. little edging chart, but just for the Ooh, winner. I love. I had Soda as my winner pick after episode one. She had an opening confessional. She got a decent amount of content. The narrative centered was around her, as you mentioned. And then it just <laughs> like crashed after that. And it was so disappointing because I was really excited to see her play. But as you said, it wasn't never, it, it didn't, it, except for the first episode, it was never about her after that. Right. It became about her relation in relation to other people, right? In mm-hmm. relation to Tevin, in relation to Venus. And so that, yeah, it just, she just lost that longevity in terms of her storyline. And ugh, I, I, I was sad about it, but I'm yeah. curious to know then how that narrative is going to play out with regards to the other two. And well, that's why I think it's interesting because Ben has the exact opposite, where it's everybody's been like, Oh, Ben is like someone I relate to, but it's from their perspective and it's never Mm -hmm. been from Ben's. And then this episode was a little bit more from Ben's perspective. And so that is interesting to read into as well. Yeah. uh, Maybe it was to, again, do that fake out of, again, I certainly felt like Ben was going, especially the way that everyone was like basically weeping at tribal council. And then it's like, oh no, it's Shim at the the end of all that. (laughs) But uh, I guess people love him, loved him too. What I will say though is uh, I I don't do the Leon Edgic, if you will, but I do think this episode was strong for one particular person. If I did that exercise with you, Liana, like, this is Kenzie's. I'm I trying think. to do a K. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, like, what are you doing? I don't know. Uh, I don't know. But yeah. my my board has said Kenzie. I, I had Tiffany, I think maybe one or two episodes, but my board has been straight Kenzie. Like, and this has just continued to emphasize to me. Kenzie is to me the, like, either, I just, she had, I mean, I don't know. She, she, she just to me, she's got to be the winner. I just don't. She's the mermaid dragon. She's not. She's the mermaid the, dragon. The first mythical creature to win Survivor. I mean, oh. here's the thing. I've seen a lot from the beginning with Randon, right, about how Venus is the new Parvati. Kenzie is the new Parvati. Let's Ooh. like get that straight. Ooh. Okay. I think that's a claim. Well, uh, I, think well, it's, I, I don't think they're that alike, though. I don't, I don't know. Well, I mean, so I think I think if you have to make a claim, I mean, listen, I think poverty is unfortunately put in that corner of like, yeah, flirting to. But I think it's that charm offensive. It's this idea of like making someone feel good. It's coming in from this very minoritized position, which mm-hmm. poverty certainly did in Heroes versus Villains. And being able to like navigate a foothold in it where she's not the most threatening of her allies i think also the way she was being looked at in the pre-merge and being talked about was the way that poverty was kind of spoken about in the pre-merge of heroes versus villains as well mm-hmm. it's not a complete apples to apples comparison but i would say it's much closer to the fruit proper than what venus is doing oh for sure and i think too that um you know, i think that that's a really important point because i think a lot i've seen a lot of people saying that venus is the new poverty and i was like here's the thing Venus is probably Parvati and Cook Islands, but not any other season. And a lot of that is because Parvati knows how to read people and then respond to them to make them feel good. And Venus does not give a damn how they feel. She's going to tell you her opinion. And you know what? Strategically, she has really good strategy. She just doesn't know how to read people and have maybe the emotional intelligence to have those conversations to kind of manipulate it through the charm offensive, like you said. Um, And I can see that with Kenzie, but I also feel like this episode in particular, like if, if she doesn't win, kudos to the editors. I, I know. I was like, I was like, I'm not going to say it. <laughs> say the word kudos. That's all I think about. Okay. Yeah. So, I, I mean, kudos she, to the editors for like this incredible fake out because this was such a good episode for her. Mm-hmm. I mean, the thing is, is like her edit is almost so dominant that it knocks her out, especially because women mm-hmm. stereotypically have not had really strong edits. Like Dee's edit was very good, but she was, you know, middle of the pack for confessionals. It's not like she was top of the list, which Kenzie is in terms of getting the number of confessionals. That being said, she went to tribal council and almost every single time except for god smiting randon so (laughs) there's a reason why she ended up going so much so okay maybe that's like the reason for it i just between the opening episode which to me is a big indicator of potential candidates for the win 
consistently throughout. I mean, it's just, it's been absolutely stellar. And we've been able to see the way that other people respond to her as well. Like the tribal council in this episode with the whole like love fest thing that was happening. I mean, yeah. When we cue you. (laughs) Yes. Okay. You. A cue was like, and we need to shout out to her, like of all the big dudes who are throwing the challenges, myself, <laughs> the top champion included, you know, like, uh, good job, Kenzie. Like, that was so cute. I loved that. Well, I also imagine from his perspective, it's a bit like, hey, I'm not doing well in the challenges. She is. Please get rid of her over me. Yeah, focus yes. on her and not He's me. He's such a me. big target. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's but really, oh my god, his his arrogance though for the like when they were talking about can anybody beat Hunter and I, he was like, well, you I, don't even know. <laughs> honestly, like I I am so sorry for the people who are not obsessed with this man at this point in the season. What an incredible television character! Where yeah, he has that confessional where he's like, Tim says that nobody can beat Hunter in the challenges, and debatable. Uh, <laughs> I just had the moment, and I'm not even joking, when you just said Tim says, I was like, who's Tim? Who's and Tim? then I was like, oh, yeah, Tim. Jim. <laughs> um, but no, it, you know what I think is interesting is that I had a full-on kind of argument with uh, with my, my friend and co-host Tyler as to whether or not he actually threw the challenge. Um, mm. And I said, we've seen him when he doesn't do well. And he does not handle that well. So he handled it well this time, but is it because an entire tribe isn't dependent on going to tribal council? You're going to go anyway. So you might as well go, oh yeah, I fell. Wink. Yeah. Or, it, you know what I mean? So I think he was telling the truth. I think yeah. that he fell on purpose. I, I I agree. I think what doesn't help is him really dig it in by being like, and I purposely wanted to be not immune for this vote, which is like, an odd 5D chess level of thinking. I can understand it if you're like, I am the safest in this tribe by far because I have the Yanus and I have this plus one alliance where no votes are going to come to me. Mm-hmm. It's just very oddly couched. It's yeah. like, all is going to plan. <laughs> I, so here's a, like, I to a certain extent, I almost understand it. Where it's like, if I can't rely on the alliances that I've built up till this point, I'm never going to win. So let's just figure it out now because otherwise I'll get to go chill at Ponderosa, you know, and just like hang out. Right. So Mm -hmm. I have long said, if I'm not going to be in the final three of survivor, I want to be the first juror. And I mean that with my whole heart because I want to have a vacation after all of this and sit and read and not have to think about anything and have people come back and be like, you smell bad. Go take a shower and we'll have to have, we'll have some French fries. From your ivory throne. Yes. And I'll be like, Oh, welcome to Beth's Ponderosa. This is, you know, like I, I want to be the warden of Ponderosa. That's where I want to be. You know, who would make Mm -hmm. a fantastic form of the jury from that perspective david jelinski i'm just saying welcome to jelinski's <laughs> house of fun bring him back take several seats <laughs> <laughs> i can't fit on seven though oh man uh, why across him i i mean q is just like the, again i will say what i said last week the pure audacity of this man <laughs> that he starts the episode where venus immediately goes to soda being like you voted for me. And so I was like, nope, it's that person who played the shot in the dark. And then Charlie says, all right, I feel bad about this. I don't want to start off a relationship with a lie. Venus, it was me. And then Q pulls him aside and goes, bad Charlie. That was a very bad Charlie. Do you know what you did? Incredible. Like, wild that this man has known him for a day. And he's not even part of his plus one alliance. He's like, oh my God. nice to meet you. How dare you? Uh, it's, it's, it's incredible. I just sat back and I was thinking to myself, like, he literally just took somebody who said, I don't want there to be lies or drama and then came to him with essentially drama. <laughs> it was like, I don't want conflict. I'm going to give you conflict because you don't want conflict. It's like, oh, okay. Oh, man, I love Q. Yeah, there were so many great Q episode moments in this episode, like from the scolding to obviously everything with the challenge and him just getting so indignant with people not do, playing correctly. Uh, but- <laughs> I, can I can I play the clip? Sorry, yes, I have the clip yes, please, pulled up because there's please. one particular moment that I have to highlight here. Cincinnati. Uh, here we go. <laughs> All right. My life, I've ever heard a verbal double take 
<laughs> where when Q's talking to Liz and she says see for Cincinnati, he goes, I think you got to Wait, what? what? Like, he literally <laughs> basically goes, <"Wait>, what? <laughs> It's so good. It's so good. This moment, I just sat back and at, at first I was riding with Q and I was like, this is very frustrating. Why can't they get it? And then I was like, you know what? I kind of wonder if Liz was also kind of pulling the chain a little bit, but we don't know because we haven't really gotten to know her too much, but she's mm -hmm. such an enigma. I, I wouldn't be surprised if she was like, but he got to say two Bs. How come I can't say Cincinnati? Like, I <laughs> love that so much. I think my favorite part is that Ben changes from Birmingham to Baltimore. Oh, like, oh, that was the wrong. error. <laughs> yeah, like, that was the Oh, issue. I'm sorry. We're, we're not staying in the South. Okay, I understand. I can hear him. Yeah. Here's the thing. I knew exactly why he did that. He thought to himself, oh, I got to come up with a city that starts with the letter beforehand in like, so it's B-A oh, in instead of Birmingham. Like, that's what I'm thinking he's probably going through. But it was so funny. Um, but can we also talk about this challenge for a second? Oh, of course. Sure. First of all, I said the week before. I was like, this is, if there's one challenge I think I'd be good at, it's this one because I've spent pretty much every summer of my life just standing on top of an inner tube on my lake as boats go by and just not falling off. And I was oh like, God. this is it. I could do this. No problem. Are you Jesus like, Christ? How do you do that? Ah. Um, Supreme balance ability. It's the only thing I can bring to this. It's uh, <laughs> Beth could stand on an inner tube. <laughs> that's about it. But like, <laughs> that's all I have. And this was so weird because I felt like normally they start at the lowest footholds and get up and they just only did the top foothold and then had the widest top platform I've ever seen in my life. Like they were like, I don't know. Can you guys hold on? I was like, well, it's way wider than anybody's feet. So yes, I think they can. Um, so I don't know. I just felt like this was changed a little bit. Curious mm. about your thoughts. Well, I felt like much to the chagrin of the 42 contestants, them replaying what this was like under their season where the weather was so choppy, the waves right. were really bad. And you got to see almost like the other side of that. My assumption is because the water was so flat that that's why they started up already mm -hmm. higher. On or that we've kind of fast forwarded that they, maybe they did start on a lower rung and move their way up. Cause that's the thing yeah. is they could certainly audible things on the fly my assumption is that they had planned for the worst case scenario yeah. because also remember like this season has been pretty rough weather wise it's been mm -hmm. very rainy very stormy very rough waters in general and so they thought okay let's try to handicap ourselves a bit and then when it turns out to be lake placid like they can't exactly mm -hmm. shave down the wooden platforms at the last minute i'm yeah. surprised they didn't go to one foot sooner sooner um i mean maybe they were just kind of looking at like their calendar and like well shit we got to get two tribes to separate beaches and go to tribal council that night so mm -hmm. and that's another underrated moment i think that gets forgotten in this challenge was tevin's come on leg come on leg come on, and i was leg. like okay somebody knows jaden dior fear somebody knows <laughs> laganja stranja let's work um but i was i I think they did start the challenge there, or at the very least, like they moved up very quickly because when mm -hmm. Jeff says the several minutes thing, they're at the, the top yeah. there. Yeah. So it seems yeah. kind of weird that they would have done. But regardless, um, I also saw a tweet from Abby Marina, Maria that was talking about how they reset that one during um, Cambodia and that she was like, gonna, she was like, I, I was gonna win that. And then we reset. All right. And then, Is this the opposite of Q? <laughs> I know. That's what I'm saying. And I, it's, it's, so she was saying that like, I got a, that she was like, then I got a horrible butt cramp. And then I had to, then I fell off and, and Joe won. She goes, but beforehand, Joe was kind of struggling and I was going to win, but they reset us. And I was like, oh man, that's it. Cause it was downpour raining during Cambodia when they did that. Mm -hmm. but, Do you think Abby has a literal BBL? She's she has a BL for well, sure. She's Brazilian. Brazilian. <laughs> <laughs> she has a Brazilian butt. <laughs> or yeah, she has a BB, BB, not a BL. Not a, got a BL. Yeah. What's the lift portion? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that was the problem. Love. Big, big, big. Brazilian, Brazilian butt love. love. <laughs> oh, that feels like something love. you search for on a website. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not Google. Uh, 
<laughs> but anyway, yeah, no, I just, I love this challenge in particular. And uh, it just, I felt like because it was so calm, the fact that we got to have some of these character moments just made it so much better. Um, mm -hmm. And then you have Q on the side bench being like, my daddy told me that when I'm not in a fight, I can't say anything. And then like three minutes later, he's like trying to get in, in the fight. And Tim's like, I thought you were supposed to shut up. <laughs> yeah, it was, I'm the dying. banter was so good where Tim is doing his shout outs and Q is trying to be like Luther, the Obama translator for Jeff, being like, see, Jeff, this is how black people talk on the radio. Shout out to my uncle Poo Poo. And Tim's like, I'm going to poo poo on this idea right now. <laughs> oh, I forgot about the Big Brother shout outs. When Tim started oh, doing that, I was like, oh my God, what's <laughs> happening? Like, someone must have just watched Gabler. <laughs> <laughs> I could do that with his Alaskan well, buddy or whatever, all the whole state of Alaska yeah, or whatever they, it was. They filmed like five months after 43 ended. So I think it was a bit top of mind that they're like, all right, yeah. let's just start shouting people out. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so good. And that's the thing. Like if the challenge, because otherwise imagine this, picture this. No one's okay. Good. No one's talking, right? That's so boring. Like nothing's yeah. happening. Just calm waters. No one's chit chatting. So I'm very happy that this, <laughs> this over the top cast just went for it. And I think now, listen, I, I don't know if I'm speculating correctly. I think we might be playing hide and seek next week. Just for fun or wait, what? So is that why he's in the tree? I think that's why Hunter's in the tree. Cause I think there's also a shot of like Kenzie hiding in a bush. And unless everyone just like got a Marsha the Moose task about go hide somewhere. I'm pretty sure this cast, ironically enough, after the camp counselor leaves in Soda, they're like, uh, we're kind of bored today. Y'all want to play hide and seek? And then I would love if everyone played hide and seek and trolled Q by being like, I hope. here I am, Q. I think it would be I so would much that. better if they tried to play sardines and everybody has to get up in the tree with Hunter, except for the last person. And then it's just like, you know, eight people up <laughs> in a tree all... and the three people on the ground. Like, what's happening? Oh, my God. Liz, so... Liz is like, I'm not climbing that thing. And she'll just be like at the bottom of the tree laying there. <laughs> <laughs> Anaphylactic so shock. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, let's get into perhaps two shocking boots. Let's get into some preseason predictions about... Our double boots this week. I can't wait to hear this. All right. Whether he be named Tim, Jim, Shim, we can certainly name him the final pre-juror of Survivor 46. Liana, how'd you think Tim was going to do preseason? Okay. How about Spice as an, an alternative name uh, for Tim? Yes, he that's did nickname what... himself that to me. Yeah. So that's what I went with uh, because... <laughs> So I had Spice making the jury, uh, and I said, Tim, or Spice, as he requests to be called, <laughs> is a beast in early team immunity challenges as a former triathlete with Sega only using, losing one immunity challenge. Sega comes into the merge with numbers, baby, although this makes them a target for both Yanu and Nami. Spice escapes the first few Sega boots through his social connections with Soda and Hunter. Parentheses, they all work with kids. So I think that's supposed to be like what they bonded. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, sadly, his social connections were never strong enough and he finished mid-jury. Spice would go on a journey and lose his vote. His allies were Hunter and Soda and his enemy was Sega being good at challenges pre-merge. So are, are you suggesting that Soda was the sugar to Tim to Spice? Yes! <laughs> and Hunter's everything nice. Yes! yes! Uh, soda and Spice and everything Hunter. <laughs> Is that roll? No. I feel like that's another sure. website I could go to. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> I feel like I've heard an automatopoeia on a podcast in quite some time. <laughs> that guttural groan. Uh, so I actually had a very similar placement for Tim. Actually, I, I will point out that in my mocked up boot order, I had Jem, Mariah, and Tim all kind of going within a sequence of three boots. Mm. Um, so I had Tim making the jury. Okay. Did have him going by his Christian name. So that Tim becomes the early leader of Sega and appoints himself tribe dad. Like Bruce before him, though it starts out well, his routine begins to wear on the Sega tribe. Tim is one of the reasons that Sega goes undefeated pre-merge, cementing himself as a challenge threat for the individual game. Tim will be one of the most adamant people to go on journeys and hunt for idols on his tribe, not realizing his closest ally, Jem, is in possession of an advantage herself. 
true to his preseason mood, we'll get at least one scene of him feeling homesick and talking about how he's doing it for his kids. And stop me if you heard this before, but Tim is yet another victim of the Sega culling that happens mid-merge. I think Leon and I had very similar narratives for the season. Wow. After mm. Jem's boot, he's seen as the mouthpiece of the Alliance and the biggest challenge threat. And when he's sent out, he surprisingly gets emotional. His ally was Jem and his enemy was anyone not on Sega. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's pretty accurate. Um, what was yeah. his, his closing confessional? Didn't he say something about sexy as dad? Yes. Or something. He said, I'm the sexiest dad to have yes. lost the game or something like that. Yeah, played Survivor. He even goes played Survivor. Oh, wow. Um, which prompted Tyler and myself to say, we need to run a Brant steal of well, just sexy daddies. He's, he's a dad I'd like to vote out, a real Dilvo. <laughs> Ooh, hey <laughs> Oh, God, can, can we, we not make that a Milbo? thing? Oh, no, I want to make it a thing. <laughs> ah, yeah, we get that as merch in the shop, just like uh, Dilbo. Dilbo puts it in like Milbo. Times New Roman font, no survivor iconography involved. <laughs> Garamond. I love it. Garamond plane. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, uh, you guys had very similar uh, trajectories for the Sega tribe and a little mm -hmm. bit uh, about Tim as well. I'm trying to figure out who I think called it a little bit. I And it's really difficult, but I think I have to go with Mike because there are just a few things that I feel like, you know, not knowing that Jem had uh, an advantage, for mm -hmm. example, like, you know, he knew, I think he got to a point where he kind of figured out that she might have something. I mean, he literally asked her, or he said, he told her, yeah. oh yeah, you hit that beware advantage, didn't you? And she, she was like, no. Um, but I, I, I think that there's just little aspects there that are really funny. And I think that the, the thing that really got me with, with Mike's is the, he has an emotional goodbye. He literally stops to cry on his way out both Soda and him having very emotional exits. Um, but I don't think we expected it um, as much for Tim. And mm -hmm. so I, I, you know, it's something that just hit my heartstrings. So I have yeah. to go with Mike in this situation. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Jim, I hope you're doing well <laughs> with the kids. That, yeah. that, was, yeah, that was wild. Cause sort of like in a soda aspect, I feel like we saw so many random fits and starts to Tim. The first time he mm -hmm. talked in like three episodes was him asking when he's going to poop. And so I wasn't sure how to feel about him that, yeah, we had this moment when he's stops to wipe his tears on his shirt. It was mm -hmm. a legitimately emotional moment that I think then brought back around like, okay, this is why everyone was like yeah. pretty much in their feels at tribal council. Even if we got a little bit of the rug pull with Ben, mm -hmm. well, speaking of rug pulls, uh, I will talk about my prediction for Miss Soda Thompson. Mm -hmm. uh, I had Soda making the finale had, <gasps> I mean, I, I, would say I have some high prospects, but like, uh, this all goes to Brant Steele. So it's all about <laughs> yeah, I forgot. <laughs> not AI on my side here. Uh, Soda, Soda hits the beach running and singing on day one. She immediately clicks up with Tevin and the two bring Hunter in to control a dwindling Nami in the pre-merge. Much like Carla, Soda will end up in the hub of her tribe as we're treated to a sequence of everyone saying how much they love Soda parentheses, though that might just be them discussing what drinks they're missing. Uh, when the merge hits, Soda will use her newfound size of her tribes to lead some classroom slash camp activities like Big Booty. Uh, she'll be the one Jeff consistently goes to for Matt chats, as she's always quick with a quote or some trash talk. After running an ironclad post-merge together, Soda and Tevin begin their inevitable decline to a Jesse slash Cody endgame. In a battle between the Nami allies, Tevin will be the one to win out, convincing the others that Soda's likable personality, lack of enemies, and strength in fire making makes her the bigger threat. So I have her going out in fifth place as sort of like that Ooh. final regular <laughs> vote boot. Uh, and perhaps my boldest prediction ever, she will get a hefty chunk of Sia money. Uh, Ooh. That remains to be seen. I do think that between like the personality and she also has this story of like coming from this dysfunction home and like mm -hmm. I, so I've lived Survivor my whole life. It made sense on paper. I don't yeah. think it's gonna happen. No. It's because we didn't get it in the show. Yeah, that's yeah. The she thing. was. Where was it? Well, it's because you know it's, it was the Bonnie show for like six episodes, yeah. <laughs> which is not how many episodes it was, but still, it felt like it. So. Uh, so the closest ally and worst enemy for Soda was indeed Tevin. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so I had Soda making the jury. Mm -hmm. I said, Soda has such a bubbly personality, which allows her to create tight bonds with Kevin and Liz. 
Minnesota also mixes up an intense one-sided rivalry with Randon, unbeknownst oh. to Randon. At the first tribal council, she pops off and single-handedly orchestrates the Randon boot. God did that, but you know, <laughs> uh, the trio of Liz, Soda, Tevin power through the game until late jury when even her closest allies realize Soda is so dope and can easily win over the jury. Sadly, oh Soda's journey fizzles out before the finale at the hands of her own alliance. So I also said her allies were Tevin and Liz. Her enemies were Tevin and Liz, parentheses, Randon. <laughs> Slash God. Uh, God. (laughs) Do you think that they cut it out of the episode um, when Jeff visits (laughs) Yanu and and shows them that, uh, you know, that Random is leaving? Did they cut it when Banu said, thank you, God, for for getting rid of him, for smiting? Smiting. That would have been great. Mama, (laughs) thank you. Smiting. Kudos for you getting rid of Random for For smiting. smiting. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) Jeez. Uh, this is you guys are really killing. Well, Brent I really, I'm like came up with the same season. <laughs> I know. Is, I'm like, well, no, me and Brant Steele came up with the same season. <laughs> That's true. Right. Just stop taking say, credit. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to be Venus here. Yeah. I I think I'd have to give the edge this time to Liana though, because mm-hmm. I think the her own alliance being her undoing the way that that was like really brought out being a little earlier than maybe the, the mm-hmm. end of the game. I have to give the edge to Liana there, but I also need to give Liana the edge for the incredible soda puns. So that is, uh, I, you know, hands down, you're, so you're, dope. you're, you're really good at saying Dilvo jokes. Yes. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, <clears throat> I was going to say, speaking of Dilvos, but not that speaking of AI actually is oh. where we're going here today for our game that we are going to play. Mm. So in honor of episode several, we are playing a game based on episode titles called Outwit, Outplay, Outtitle. Ooh. What the hell are these logos? <laughs> so the way this game is going to work is I'm going to read for you three episode titles three of which are real episode titles, the th- no, two of which are real episode no. titles, the <laughs> third is generated by AI. Oh. It's also generated AI survivor logo. So if you're watching the YouTube version, you can see all of the beautiful creations that AI came up with, spelling survivor essentially incorrectly on every single yeah. one. Uh, yeah. So I see in the server. top right corner, there's server with two Vs, there's Survivor, uh, bottom row. We have, I think the one to the Sir north. Survivor. <laughs> to the one, the northeast of it is my favorite, Survivor. I think it's just a W, <laughs> the two Vs next to each other. Uh, yeah. Survivor. I want to go on Survivor. Oh my God. <laughs> this one's the closest, but the U is like merged with the the R. Right, it looks like some sort New of like letter. Eastern European serif of like, oh, yes. we actually pronounced this Glick. Yeah. <laughs> It's part of the Cyrillic exactly. alphabet, for sure. I also love the symbology as well. Like a lot of the graphics. I like the one that's just two squares next to each other. <laughs> is, is there even one that spelled it correctly? Uh, that the, should have been the game. Don't count the merge. Oh letters, yes, I like guess that one. Yeah. But they like to. It likes to do the double V. There's a lot yeah. of like so S U R V V. Like it has a hard time yeah. like parsing out the eyes. So I AI can't do fingers and it can't do V I V. Yes. Yeah. So it will be important for this game if you tell us how each word was spelled in these supposed titles. Um, okay. I'm just saying that would be very helpful for me. <laughs> yes. Well, thank- thankfully for you, Beth, they are going to be written on screen. So Ooh. we, you're going to be able to see the actual quote written out for all three of the quotes and then the answers will be revealed by survivor logos so i have the logo from the real season with an ai logo for the fake answer i think my other favorite thing about the square venn diagram design which is my favorite is the fact that it's survivor subtitle survivor (laughs) there's a lot of that like this guy yeah there's a lot of survivor survivor there's a couple that have it a few times. This one also, Survivor, Survivor. <laughs> That's the idea. So what cool. is like the Roman text written on the lower right one? <laughs> Dr. Savorio is like. Savorio. <laughs> or- or- <laughs> it sounds like a Harry Potter spell. <laughs> <laughs> Someone got you, Smite Randon. Dilvo Servar. <laughs> 
No, it's survive or not survive <laughs> Okay. <laughs> That's a good one. That's all I so I, just to be clear, we're talking about uh, past season seventh episode, yes, <laughs> not just correct. like generally in television. It, okay, no, but they are, they're titles. They could be from any episode. Okay. Um, they're not just the seventh episode, gotcha. even though episode several, obviously the, in, the inspo here. I mean, and um, I also have to think like of the, what, 700 plus episodes from t- title perspective, like, is it tough to say it might make the top several at least like what yeah. an incredible meta reference. I, honestly, although maybe when we go through some of these, you'll have some new contenders for the top several episode <laughs> titles. But let's see what you got. All right, Mike, you're going to kick things off for us. You are going to go first. Question number one. Your three quotes are salmon scrambling for safety. Don't cry over spilled octopus or for cod's sake. Liana Boris. <laughs> Do you realize what you've done? Oh no! You've walked straight into the lion's den. Let me not <laughs> only describe <laughs> what episode is not it, but I'll describe the episodes of the other two and who oh, went God. home in them. <laughs> Don't over cry over spilled octopus is an episode from the pre-merge of Survivor Cook Island, where Stephanie Favor with two ends spills the octopus, I believe, uh, and I don't believe she goes home in that episode, but is like a target because of it. For Cod's sake is I think the episode where Bob Dog goes home because there's a reward challenge where they have to toss fish to each other like they're at Pike Place Market in Seattle uh, and the and Bob Dog has the big machete and cuts the fish off. So all that is to say salmon scrambling for safety as beautiful as it is in its alliteration is written by the AI. Oh boy. Uh, okay. First of all, Beth, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, I, I only because... knew one of these and I was like, uh uh-uh. <laughs> Yeah. So not only uh, did Mike get the correct answer, you also correctly guessed the seasons <laughs> and the episodes uh, correctly. So I oh. like that that was spelled Survivor two different ways. Well, that's the theme though, is server. Sir, sir, server. Server, server. There's a giant, um, almost Burning Man esque, uh, <laughs> like structure that you offer your vote up to, named Server. Server. <laughs> I love that. Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, well, that's one point to Mike. <laughs> <laughs> that I, one I want it known that most of these, <laughs> I've never known what the titles were until uh, Paramount Plus came along. So I'm Same. stoked to see what these titles are. I was like, there's no way anybody's going to get any of these. <laughs> Except for Mike Bloom. <laughs> Lo and behold, we are no Mike Bloom immediately knows. Of I am no answer. person. I'm no normal person. We know yep. this. Uh, we know. It. All right. <laughs> so I you watch too much Survivor. All right, Beth, let's see yeah. what you got. Can you tell me exactly what episode of what season these are from? All all right, your quotes are, I'm in such a hot pickle, more cracked than a coconut, or kind of like cream cheese. Oh. Okay, <laughs> so I'm going to go with my line of thinking here for each one. I feel okay. like the first and the third ones are things that people would randomly say in an episode that would be so weird that you would make it in the middle one seems like it should be a survivor thing but it's mm. not so i'm gonna say the middle one is the odd man out oh that's interesting yeah because it's almost like if it was instead name all the fake episodes then you would be a little bit like oh it must Ooh. be both but because you know that two have to be right that mm-hmm. makes sense that's what i'm trying to do well that is the correct logic yes ah! more correct than a coconut was oh. the fake one the first oh wait there are two subtitles in that one <laughs> Survivor, 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 and then it's like a weird eyelash thing at the yeah, top. Yeah, why is there an eyeball even... theme happening? I I, people are like, the aesthetics are going too far. I don't know about an eyeball theme tribal council. <laughs> um, I this was like clearly it. the drag themed uh one, and that's yes. like you know a five hundred one that they're putting on right there. I was gonna say it's like plain Jane's outfit that she wore in this most <laughs> recent episode. Oh gosh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So I'm I'm in such a hot pickle. That's from Micronesia, episode yeah. nine. And I think kind that's of like poverty. Cheese. Poverty mm-hmm. root, I think she talks about that, right? Which she's like between the fans and the lovers alliance. And yeah. kind of like cream cheese from San Juan Del Sur, episode eleven. Yes. I don't think Alex said this, but I believe it's his boot episode for whatever gotcha. reason. Sure. Yeah, more, I just felt like that was a, a phrase person. that somebody would say that no normal person would say. So therefore, it would go on versus like, yeah, 
I don't know. I felt like, okay, more crack than a coconut seems like, uh, you know, a red herring here. So I will say though, my goal now, if I were ever to be on Survivor is I'm taking all of these quotes and I'm going to use them in episodes until they are real episode titles. I'm You're such welcome. a cracked cream cheese coconut. Like, is that, is, like that is, that, is that your idol phrase? <laughs> exactly. Oh my gosh. Mm. We're more cracked than a coconut, you know, <laughs> see, it works. I want to start, I would, I'm going to be the person if I, if I'm ever on Survivor, which means they, they've gone through the billions of other people in the world and they said, <laughs> okay, Beth, we need Same. Beth Dixon on here. If I'm ever on Survivor, I want it known that I'm only looking for gift moments and for opportunities yeah. to just like confuse the crap out of not just the contestants, but also production. So I would be the one standing there trying to say a phrase when there's no twist like that and having all of them be like, and Jeff be like, what is she doing? I, um, oh, I, I can't that. wait for Reddit threads complaining of like, stop casting people that are only there to make gifts. And it's just, <laughs> Beth Dixon was the worst casting we've ever seen in our lives. And it's like, yeah, that was the point. I don't want to win a million dollars. I want to make a million gifts. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I'm a true oh. Leo. <laughs> mm -hmm. I want the attention. Okay, well, you're both doing so much better than I expected. Let's see if you These can are great, though, Liana. These are I'm really good. I'm loving this. Okay, well, let's see, Mike. Let's go back to you. Your three quotes are, I don't want to be the worm, the sea slugger, and I played like a lion, not a lamb. So I don't want to be the worm is the fifth episode of last season, Survivor 45, because I believe that quote was when was from Kendra eating the worm and says, like, I want to be the one eating. I don't want to be the worm. The sea slug slugger was one of the rare gross food eating challenges that happened in a modern episode of survivor that was in i believe episode eight of survivor ghost island it was the libby vincek boot uh because that was the quote given to angela perkins for just deep throating a like a really gross smoothie uh and winning immunity i played like a lion not uh, not a lamb it feels like a quote from erica but it did not make an episode title Okay, you need Jesus because like <laughs> well, you got all of them correct and exactly the episodes. Like that's oh God, absolutely I'm such terrifying. a loser. I'm you such are a loser. such a loser. Mike, like, you were like the hobby. rain man of, <laughs> of survivor titles. I can't count cards, but I can count episodes. <laughs> Oh, oh my god. god. <laughs> and you got the exact episode numbers. Episode five and episode eight. Oh, like, you are so oh my gosh. Yeah, this is an uh, this is we're done. We're done with the game. This is an intervention. No, you know what? I don't even want to play. I just want to see if we, Mike can get every single one correct. Actually, I want to play, obviously. But when it comes to my turn, before uh, as a reveal, I want Mike to say like if if you know Okay, okay. yeah, we'll, we'll do, do that. that. Yeah. yeah. Uh <laughs> but but I need to draw attention as well to <laughs> I guess is that Sandra statue 2.0 in the fake title? It's I like if know. they made Parvati as fast you. That's what it right. feels like to me. No, it'd be a headband instead of a more of a buff across. And she would be more like <laughs> she's over like a real yeah, doing the person she needs a headband, and then she's over like like real trees, which this is the only one that's sort of like not cartoonish in terms of the background. So yeah, I look, I don't <laughs> I also know. love that. Like, all right, we're just gonna, we're kind of lazy. Can we include some like photorealistic jungles in the background of our logo? I love. Servier. Servier. Beth, we're going to you for question four. Sugar, spice, and everything lies. Are we kidding? After <laughs> <laughs> Okay, okay. your quotes are stupid people, stupid, stupid people. Big balls, big mouth, big trouble. Or sugar, spice, and everything lies. I, I really feel like these are all titles of RuPaul's Drag Race episodes. <laughs> like, right? Uh, big balls, big mouth, big trouble. Big trouble. Oh, Incredible. God. I <laughs> this one is a little tougher. I felt like I could kind of put my finger on the pulse of like the first round I had. This one, I think we're gonna have to go for I th <laughs> I think big balls, big mouth, big troubles, the the odd one out. But the no, that's not true because Jeff says the word balls all the time this past challenge i sat there and i was i had like a balls ticker and i was like or not this past challenge um I just, <laughs> a balls ticker. so bad <laughs> all right can that be on the back of my dilvo shirt just as balls, <laughs> balls, ticker? Ticker. balls ticker not to be confused with balls tickler anyway um so we <laughs> or ball snicker <laughs> balls liquor actually i'm gonna change my answer i think I think it's the stupid people one. I think big balls, big mouth, big trouble is something that would be a, a, 
a title. And I think Sugar Spice and Everything Lies is a title as well. All right, Rain Man, what you got? So unfortunately, Bet Stupid People, I believe, is a quote by Sheehan from Survivor All-Stars. I think it's the Alicia Boot episode, I want to say, when she does win immunity. Big Balls, Big Mouth, Big Trouble is the double boot in Survivor Guatemala because they had this challenge with the giant balls that they had to push up against. And that's where Bobby, John, and Jamie got their own big balls in their big mouths. Uh, Sugar Spice and Everything Lies is uh, something that AI came up with. <laughs> that is correct. All-Stars and Church. Guatemala. <laughs> This is, I think, maybe my favorite of all of the AI-generated logos. Wait, well, this is like the haunting of Hill House, but on the top is a ship, and beneath it is, like, the lower two-thirds of a skull. <laughs> I like it. The head goes into the wood. It's this so is cool. this is like if Survivor and Stranger Things had a, like, an, like a, if there was, like, an underworld, like, Instead of like a redemption island, you go to the underworld area. Like, well, I, like, I, I love the twist as well. Upside Honestly, down. Survivor needs to go more international. So I'm glad they cast like high, half Icelandic people, considering <laughs> the theme for this season is sheer we are. <laughs> It takes place. It takes place in the the hot springs of uh, of Iceland. Yeah, surge war. That's probably my favorite spelling overall uh, of Survivor. Yeah. Uh, okay, so Mike, we're gonna go back to you for question number five. Tangled in a web of lies, zipping over the cuckoo's nest, or you mangled my nets. So I know that Zipping Over the Cuckoo's Nest is an episode from Survivor David versus Goliath. I believe Christian says it. It might be the John Hennigan boot episode, if I'm remembering correctly, the minority vote split. You mangled my nets. I may not remember the season on this. Oh, actually, you know what? I know what that it is. That is disgusting that you don't know. I know. Yeah, that's I'm, actually I'm, rude. But I do. It's Survivor Redemption Island because it's a quote that Philip Shepard makes. Uh, one of the rare peaks of like, non-controversial drama in that post-merge was like Philip getting ticked off that the other Omotepes had tangled up his nets. So ironically enough, Tangled in a Web of Lies is the one to be untangled as the fake. All right. So you are correct. The Tangled in a Web of Lies is the AI generated one, but Zipping Over the Cuckoo's Nest is actually from Survivor Kara Moen. Oh. It's episode 10. So if you remember what happened in episode that, 10, Oh, I think that's the Kermon. Three Amigos that's... Tribal Council, if I remember correctly. Okay, yeah. So that's that was the title of this one. Uh, and then, as you said, Redemption Island for You Mangled My Nets. I right. literally thought of Philip Shepard for the You Mangled My Nets. Really? I have no... Like, that in my mind, I was like, that seems familiar. Like, it seems like like when Philip oh, was upset about... I, didn't, I, I don't know if you did this, Liana, but I think you went from Philip's boot episode to his quote. Yeah, that Whoa. was on purpose. Oh. <laughs> I love the list of titles, and I was like, haha, that's funny. <laughs> that was the logic. Oh, that's funny. <clears throat> okay. Beth, let's go back to let's you. Go. Question number six. When the rats fight back, if it smells like a rat, give it cheese, or love is in the air, rats are everywhere. I think the last two are more poetic and therefore are enough to make like this all seems like some kind of weird sci-fi rat like fandom world where like these are very sci-fi specific... rat fandom world <laughs> i love it i don't, I don't know, know what that is, is. <laughs> are the <laughs> rats the fandom or are people fans of the people rats? are fandoms <laughs> or are the fandom for like it's like a like a sci-fi like i don't know like a like a star trek or something like that but it's all about like rats or something i don't know <laughs> i don't know what i'm talking about <laughs> yeah i just okay so you're saying that there so is a property a sci-fi property where rats build some sort of futuristic society yes and you're saying that there's a fandom of people who follow yeah, who love it sci-fi rat show yes like it's like it's a like a trilogy or something right and like mm. when the rights when the rats fight back is very like when the empire strikes back kind of thing you know or like um <laughs> if if it smells like a rat give it cheese is the first one and you're like oh wow like we're gonna learn about these rats and everything and like you. you know and then like <laughs> love is in the rare uh, love is in the air rats are everywhere like that is like the full circle of like the love story coming to Together, even despite the odds of like this, you know, horrible government that's trying to tear the rat people apart. I don't know. Um, Ooh, rat so, people. Yeah. I don't are know they, if the rat wait, people are, are they like yeah are they like rat sized rats or are they like humanoid rats? 
I, I I will let this, you know, whoever the audience wants it to be at home, like that is the power of this. It can yeah, be are they rats of an unusual size? <laughs> Ooh, or, or come are on, Brian. Or, or are we talking like a splinter right? thing where it's like a mutated rat turned into like a, a walking, talking, oh. ambling rat man? Oh, yeah. But like also giving wisdom. Mm-hmm. 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 Rat yeah, man. I can see. So the rats are kind of the Jedis also in this situation. Loving. Is Pizza Rat in it? Can Pizza, pizza rat Rat's a thousand percent in it? Are you kidding? They're like the star yeah. of if it smells like a rat, give it cheese. Yeah. But on top of bread that also has sauce on it. Come on. That's the parentheses. That's in parentheses. That's the subtitle. Um, so okay. all of yeah. this to say, I think I'm going to go with when the rats fight back is the the fake one. All right, Mike, is she correct? She is. So if it smells like a rat, give it cheese. I believe is the name of the infamous Eric gives up the necklace episode in Survivor Ooh. Micronesia. And then Love is in the Air, Rats Are Everywhere took place in the same location, but it's Survivor Palau. I think it's the second episode because the reference is to Greg and Jen like cuddling and flirting with each other. And also that there's like an abundance of rats around the camp. This is insane. I just want it known. This is the best I've ever done on any quiz in um, the B&B. And I am just shooting from the hip here. So that's great. Yeah, you're just going with your gut. <laughs> you're correct. Yes. I'm going with my gut and my butt. That's the most important thing. Yes, you're correct. Servivior, servivor, servivior. All oh, right. Yeah. They're, <laughs> they're just adding it every yeah, single wait, time. Why is it above the sun? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It's kind of cool, though. It's like, it's like look at Banner, Michael. Oh my God. <laughs> look at Banner, Michael. Like, it just looks like it's like a, a party <laughs> banner strung from the two trees. <laughs> Family love survivor. Uh, Mike, um, we're going back to you. Here are your episode titles. Survivor smacked me in the chops. I'd trade my socks for a slice of pizza. <laughs> Or Nacho Mama. God, I love that second phrase. Good on the AI for writing it. Survivor Smack Me in the Chop is, I believe, the title of the premiere of Survivor Philippines in reference to when Russell Swan came back and talked about when a very delicate way of describing the fact that he almost died. Nacho Mama is the name of the second episode of Survivor Marquesas because Patricia was nicknamed Mama and they weren't coming up with like quotes for episode titles yet from the players. So they just kind of churned out Nacho Mama. <laughs> They use their own AI to come up with that way back in the day, which was their brains. That is correct. Yes. I'd trade my socks for a slice of pizza is an AI. It's from the hits season, Cerevior, Survivor, <laughs> Service? <laughs> and then also, Tips your Sour. Tip, or, yeah, t- Tib Vist Out. <laughs> kind of looks like Something Orifice like at the bottom there. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Oh, it does. Yeah. Ugh. All right, Beth, you are technically mathematically eliminated, of but course. you're doing a great job here. So let's honestly, the fact right. that I'm against the other, like, yeah, Mike oh, Bloom no. is AI in this, and I swear, <laughs> like, you are doing a great job. Thanks. He's a psycho. Like, just to be clear, like, this is not normal human behavior. Okay, it should not be celebrated. To be honest, like, go ahead, like, touch grass. Like, my brother in Christ, you need to get a life. You have a child. Touch him and hang out with your own child, okay? Touch grass. Touch Come on. Exactly. <laughs> oh, my God. I want server for your touch grass season. I want that to come up. Oh my God. Like, Jesus. Okay. I feel like I'm Charlie and you're Q being like, wrong. You're doing it wrong. You're winning, but you're doing it wrong. You lose, sir. Oh. God. Yeah. Ellen, the shape of his forehead. Tell me about it. Okay. Question number eight. Beth, here are your episode quotes. Okay. Panicked, desperate, thirsty as hell. You ate. <laughs> Why my did last they drag Echo? me like that? They just they said, "Bitch, <laughs> me? this bitch is panicked, desperate, thirsty as hell." How did <laughs> they it- know? <laughs> Am I the title? Am I okay? <laughs> you ate my last mango, or time to bring about the charm apocalypse? Okay. I feel like I recognize the mango. Like I think there was like a mango drama in in like the 30s or something like that like or so, like like, like 1930 in the 1930s there was a shortage of mangoes and back yeah, then talk about well, prohibition <laughs> we, we had to hide our more mango. like mango abition <laughs> um <laughs> X 
actually, I think written on the sleeves of the t-shirt. Yeah. Mango ambition. <laughs> Mango ambition. Oh my God. Um, I feel I'm trying to figure out, did AI come up with panic, desperate, thirsty as hell, or did it come up with charm apocalypse? Because I could see a character like uh like a parvity or something be like, it's time to like bring about the charm apocalypse like i need to charm everybody kind of thing right i could i could see something like that i don't know if survivor would go with thirsty as hell though and that's so i guess i'm gonna go hmm, i guess i will go with panic desperate thirsty as hell i have no all idea. right mike do you want to tell her that the mango ambition actually never happened yeah no! sorry there was no mango yeah. gate so panic desperate thirsty <laughs> as hell Yes, it was a little more of a risque title, but maybe it's because it's a little bit more of a risque season. I believe this is Survivor All-Stars, uh, and perhaps a reference to the fact that since they didn't start with Flint, they had trouble finding their own water source for a while. And trying to bring about the charm apocalypse, I believe it's from David versus Goliath. I don't mm -hmm. think it's a Christian quote. Maybe it is, but... Either way, it's from a modern season. Mm -hmm. What was the season? Wasn't there something where people were like eating the last of whatever fruit there banana was? Etiquette. Well, there's banana etiquette. And there's <sighs> also, there was Papaya Gate. From papaya, 49. that's what it was. Yes, 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 yes. Where yes. Ricard went on a reward and then came back and ate the manga, uh, the papaya. That's, that's exactly what I was thinking of. And, and I just was like, oh, that's got to be that episode then. Then move on. Yeah, the wrong yeah. fruit. Oh, I free. love him. I mean, listen, we had the bird theme season already in 45. I say bring it back to get... Is Let's that a bird it. in the middle, though? Yeah, I think it's supposed to be a bird. Or at least it's got wings. I don't know what this middle oh, thing is. Oh, see, maybe? I thought up at the top, this was eyes and then the bridge of a nose with like a snout at the end. Oh, this is a fun uh, little... Uh, re uh, I feel like this is an ink block bit. test. Yeah, Rorschach test. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, I don't know. I see my wings. therapy appointment this week and go, what does it mean when I think Tell me this? what this means. What, I see a bird in this. What does that mean? <laughs> uh, we also get a little half letter here, which I love. Uh, so, yeah. all right. Just hide, well, hiding out and like Hunter in the tree. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I want to say congratulations, but I feel like I shouldn't say congratulations to I don't Mike think Bloom. we need yeah, to. You're, you're just feeding my bad double. habits if you're if you're uh, giving me praise. Yeah. So, um, so what boo, we're going to say is bad, Mike, boo. bad. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to say ill, Mike. No. 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 <laughs> I'll, I'll take the W nonetheless. It's a little lowercase <laughs> W that's kind of scrawled out in poop, but it's a W nonetheless. Not poop. No, it, that was weirdly impressed, like terrifyingly. Which, by uh, the way, chop them up like poop. Uh, I don't think was an episode title, but it is a memorable Ooh. quote that could have been written by AI. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, well, there was there was some that I could recognize like immediately, so I tried to shy away from those. I didn't realize that literally every quote would be recognizable to uh, one Mike Bloom. So. <laughs> anyway. Oh God. I'm impressed, but I feel really, really gross. Mm -hmm. Like it was yeah. just, it was something that it was impressive. It was like a train wreck. Like I wanted <laughs> to watch it, but I'm also like, I don't think I'm a better person for having watched and listened to it. Listen, no matter what the exercise, like I'm happy that Liana got to deep dive into these survivor episode titles because yeah, yeah they're so much fun. And especially <laughs> yes. when they're pulling quotes from the players and they're not just written out by production. Not People Joe say Mama. the most <laughs> random shit on this show. Oh yeah. Yes, I think that was the biggest revelation because we talk so much about oh my god, episode several, like what a clever title, that's so funny. But then looking through previous episode titles, I was like, there are bangers in here. Like Survivor's been churning out great episode titles from the get go, and the fact that like I mean, I think Marquesas was maybe the earliest season that I had pulled from, but even from there, like you still get some some hot titles. So For that sure. was. Very into the past yeah honestly i'm a little surprised they they did a little bit of like quoting of the players and episodes in like a couple times but it didn't start until cook, cook islands. islands actually with mm. the infamous uh i want to forgive her but i can't because she screwed with my chickens the like mm -hmm. longest episode title ever that they're like hey eh, you know what let's just start pulling things from players and we kind of have never stopped since which is why episode several is so interesting because that's the first time in like over 17 18 years that they yeah. haven't done this Mm -hmm. I really think we need a deep dive of survivor titles, like in the history of it by one Mike Bloom. Um, yeah. And like, there you go. That could be like a part of, instead of the evolution of off strategy season. off season, there you go. Instead of that, it could be like the evolution of titles. Episode titles. Mm -hmm. Listen, if the off season's long enough and I have a microphone <laughs> in front of my face, chances are 
I might do it. But I will turn the microphone back onto you, one Beth Dixon. As of course, at the end of every BNB podcast, we give the spotlight to our guests to highlight a charity or a cause that is important to them. Yes. So, Beth, what do you have this week? You know what? I forgot to think about this ahead of time, but I think just generally one of the things that I was reminded of this week, and it's a part of um, the work that I do, I, if you um, are somebody who have gone to a college or university and you feel so compelled, I do in, um, agree with giving back to your college, to your university, because of the many people who paved the way for you as well. Um, and what I like the most about when you give back, you're investing in the students who are there now, um, who have different challenges probably than what you had or very similar ones. And so I just want to say in general, when you are giving back to different institutions that you've gone to, you're not only helping to increase the value of your degree, um, but you're also helping to make future leaders of the world who are going to make a difference out there. Um, so as somebody who's a champion for education in general, obviously give to those um, different charities and organizations who are supporting various different kinds of education opportunities, whether they be for um, different marginalized identities, whether they're for making sure that kids are eating, like different back, um, backpack programs, those kind of things, anything to help support education in general. Um, but something that normally gets lost in that, because there's a lot of different dif discourse about it, which I totally understand. I am a supporter of somebody saying, you know what, I can give $10, $15, whatever, because the more people who give to back to your respective schools, the more likely they are to get external funding from different corporations or foundations and such. So you don't have to be the one that's making millions of dollars, but just by giving 10, maybe you're going to help the school secure something to really make a transformational gift. Very well said. And Beth, thank you so much for everything you brought to the BNB this week. <laughs> we always love absolutely having you on each and every <laughs> season. I'll keep the microphone on you. What would you like to plug for all the listeners out there? Oh, well, of course, I have to plug that this next week is going to be the finale of Drag Race Season 16. So if you would like to listen to Liana, myself, and Amon talk about, obviously, the finale, but also Season 16 in general, please be sure to do so. Uh, we're very excited about it. We also recorded this week's episode uh, today as well, so you should be getting that on your feed uh, probably around the same time, which is great. Um, and you can follow me everywhere at Augusta Wind 11. And you can follow me on my weekly meltdown if you want really just like messy, unhinged coverage that doesn't really cover Survivor, but just hints at it every once in a while. How much percentage <laughs> of your coverage is Survivor, you think? Um, I would say this past episode, it was just Tyler and me was actually a lot more. But when it's the three of us, it's it's just chaos. And I would say probably a good 15 percent. Uh, <laughs> all right. So then we use it as a framing device. And then we just talk about aqua dumps most of the time. So, well, let's have uh, some more fun with this. Put yourself in your My Weekly Meltdown trio into each one of the Yanus. Oh, okay. We literally were trying to figure out who's uh, Tyler. This isn't Yanu, but Tyler is Charlie. Like this, mm. like that is absolutely who Tyler is. Um, I think, I think we were discussing that I am somewhere of a mixture between Tiffany and Kenzie. Um, mm. and that, but I don't know. I think Allison is very, uh, Tiffany coded at times. So like, we've got a lot there as well. So if we had to do it, then I would say I'm probably Kenzie Tyler's Q, I guess. <laughs> and Allison is Tiffany. Um, but it's a uh, we're we're our own weird trio. I think we're probably more like the Tika three than uh the uh Yanu three. Not Yano. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. always say them incorrectly. I th I said Yami half the time today, and I meant not Nami. I don't know. I, it's just <laughs> wild that for the second like you know, season that featured a purple tribe. We had three of them make the merge. They're all in this tight alliance. They're all these weird wackadoo characters that like work together yet also kind of detest each other at the same time. Oh, for sure. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. Like in that, it, like the Tika three, I was clearly a jam jam. Carson is Tyler and Carolyn is definitely Allison. They're like the same person. Uh, so it was, yeah, very, very, that one's a little easier. This one, I'm like, I don't know. We're all blend, I guess. All a right, three well, cheese blend. Yeah, Liana, blend up what you're doing this week. Besides Drag Race, what have you got going on? 
Yeah, so other than Drag Race, Pui and I, uh, we have households still recovering from illnesses, but did manage to record for both the finale of Group C and then the latest episode. We got to see Group A slash B again, whatever they're calling it. So yeah, so we we did a double header essentially for that episode. So all we're up to date now for the Mass Singer coverage. So check that out. Neither the Rehab of the Feet or the Mass. Uh, you can check out everything I'm doing as well over at Parade. As I mentioned, talk with both Tim and Soda, both really great interviews in and of themselves. Uh, Tim brought a lot of light as to how he felt about his game, namely that he felt very alone out there. Uh, much like his bodily functions, he cannot find a number two. And maybe that informs some of the ways that he proceeded forward in this game. And Soda... As I mentioned before, I think she gave a lot of perspective as to how she felt things with Venus. I do think shades a little bit as to the interactions we saw them have over the course of the season. Very much recommend that. I also spoke with the team most recently eliminated from The Amazing Race, and we had Sasha Joseph on for a very fun episode of that. And then one other thing that I will plug is that The Circle is coming back after what's felt like ages uh, for its sixth season on Wednesday, this Wednesday, with its first four episodes. And there will be get another Motley trio of podcasters coming together to talk about it. So we're going to be doing circle coverage with myself, Taryn Armstrong, and the aforementioned Puya. Uh, we'll be putting out weekly podcasts talking about that recent batch of episodes that just dropped. Should be a really fun season. Uh, Liana put to the forefront the power that AI has, but we will see it much more in stark contrast this season because there is an AI contestant. So it's going to be, I think, a really interesting season to talk about that honestly might have the most like societal impact out of any reality show that we've seen in some time. For sure. I, I haven't watched the episodes yet, but like, I when I heard that, I was like, oh, I'm sorry, what? Like, what? I'm so curious to see how it goes. I can't wait to watch. It's going to be crazy. I, in, in the best of ways, because I just am sitting back and saying, well, can it spell? survivor correctly in something like this you know is it going to be obvious or are they going to sit back and go "Ooh, the circle bot can't spell when they're going hey circle send a message that says blah 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 like yeah it'll be I mean, interesting it'd be great uh unfortunately a little behind the peak of the curtain they're basically like telling some intern inside the walls what to say and they type it out so i want that I think job there's still that middleman uh to kind of like autocorrect if that happens but also if the middleman misspells it then like could be human error quite the opposite yeah we don't know it could be somebody who like i type mistakes all the time i yeah. say mistakes all the time we've heard it seventy thousand times in this podcast so shout out to yami <laughs> yami my favorite tribe yummy. well we have quite the yummy podcast next week as we are going to be devouring it another week of survivor 46 it's been a very fun streak as of late so i'm hoping that continues if we have hide and seek it's going to be tough to say that it won't. Apparently also a really big tribal council. And to break it down, we'll have somebody on who had his own fair share of big tribal councils, including ones that he instigated. Jesse Lopez is going to be making his B&B &B mm. debut. He is very excited about this. He said this is like one of the final items he has to check off of his survivor bucket list. So we shall see Aww. what that might provide, what will be in that bucket next week. If you have game ideas, Send them our way, rhapbnb at gmail.com or hashtag rhapbnb on social media, and we will be open to any and all ideas. I got to go get a life now. <laughs> Liana, thank you so much for the game and great work as usual. Beth, thank you as always as well. Special thanks to the entire RHAP team behind the scenes for editing this podcast to get to your eyes and ears in pristine condition and Will from America for his fantastic theme song. We'll be back next week with Jesse Lopez to break down episode eight of Survivor 46. Until next time, everybody, we'll check you out at your next day.